Hey guys, Michael from Concrete Chemistry, and today's video we'll be talking about how to determine which element is oxidized and which element is reduced in a redox reaction. If you're rusty or if you were determining oxidation numbers, please check out my video that where I go over that in detail because we're going to be using all those rules and the technique in this video and I'm not going to be going over that in detail. So if you haven't done so, check that out first and then come back to this video. Let's start off with the definition. Oxidation means there was a loss of electron, and a reduction means there's a gain of electron. And you probably may have heard of the mnemonic device, Leo the lion says grr. So loss of electron is oxidation, and then gain of electrons reduction. If something is getting oxidized, it'll be losing electrons, and so its oxidation number will be increasing, because electrons are negatively charged, and when you lose a negative charge, it becomes more positive. So oxidation involves an increase in the oxidation number. Reduction, on the other hand, will increase it, in, involves a decrease in the oxidation number, because uh, you'll be gaining electrons, and electrons are negative, so that's why it'll make the oxidation number smaller. So let's jump into some examples. We'll be determining which elements oxidize and reduce in these following reactions. So the very first step is just to assign the oxidation numbers to every element on the react side and product side. I have the rules for the oxidation numbers right, numbers right here. The first one is going to be zero because it's a pure element. The second one is the monoatomic ion of a positive. This has a positive one charge, so this would just be a positive one. Cu2 plus will be positive 2 because that's a positive 2 charge, and then, C and then Ag will just be 0. And once you have assigned all the oxidation numbers, then just compare how the oxidation numbers for the elements is changing. Uh, Cu, you can see it went from it went from 0 to positive 2, so that was an increase in oxidation number. That means that the Cu was oxidized, so we can say that oxidized element would be the copper, and then you can see that the silver went from plus one to zero, so that means that the silver was reduced um, because silver would have picked up electrons to, to have a decreased oxidation number, whereas copper would have lost electrons to have an increase in oxidation number. Let's take a look at something that's a little more more, more interesting. So we have another reaction here, but this reaction has way more elements. Uh, so we, let's just start by the, assigning the oxidation for for every single element. H plus, this is going to be positive 1. Um, Mn, O4 minus, O is negative 2, and then that would be negative 8, so Mn must be positive 7 and make it negative 1 overall. Again, if this is if this part's a little confusing, please watch my other video about oxidation numbers and then come back to this one. And next one, H2O2, H is positive 1, O is negative 1, because in peroxide, O is negative 1. Mn2 plus, it's a single element with a positive 2 charge, so this will just be positive 2. O2 would just be 0 because it's an elemental form. And then H2O to H is plus 1 and O is negative 1. Now we're going to compare, next we're going to compare the oxidation number from, on the left hand side and right hand side to see if there, what's oxidized and what's reduced. So H you can see it goes from, uh, it was plus 1 on the left, plus 1 on the left, and then it's still plus 1 on the right. So H was neither oxidized nor reduced because its oxidation number was plus 1 throughout. Next one, Mn. Mn is plus 7 on the left, then it went down to plus 2. So it, it had a decrease in oxidation number, that means there was a gain of electrons. So we can say that the reduced element is going to be manganese. Next one, O. O is negative 2 on the left, um, negative 2, negative 1 on the left, so there's varying oxidation number, but on the right hand side it is going, it's 0. So this one's interesting, because you can see that the O regardless of which one you look at, there was an increase in the oxidation number. So that means that the O is going to be oxidized because it has lost electrons, so that's why its oxidation number is going up. Um, but not not every single one of the O's were, were oxidized because you can see that in H2O, there's some O's that were negative two. So a couple of the O's were oxidized, but, but not every one of them. And we already talked about H, how it states positive one. So in this reaction, the element reduces manganese, and then the element oxidizes is oxygen. Let's take a look at two more examples, just to give you guys some more some more reference points. The next ones, C, actually we don't have any rules for C, H is positive 1, so that's positive 4, which means C has to be negative 4. O2, we already talked about that's 0. O is negative 2, so that's negative 4, and the carbon is positive 4. Uh, and then H2O, we looked at the earlier, is positive 1, negative 2. So the carbon, you can see, it goes from negative 4 to positive 4. So that means the carbon was uh, was oxidized because it 
it had an increase in oxidation number. And then the H, it states positive 1 throughout, so that means it's neither oxidized nor reduced. And in the O, you see it goes from 0 to 0 to negative 2. So oxygen is the element that's reduced. All right, let's take a look at one last example. This is an interesting one. Start by assigning the oxidation numbers again. H is positive 1, O is negative 1 here because it's peroxide. Uh, H here is positive 1, O is negative 2, and then O2 is an oxygen elemental form, so it would be 0. So you can see H stays the same throughout, so H again is neither oxidized nor reduced, but O, uh, it went from, depending on which, which, which one you look at, it went from negative 1 to negative 2, so this would mean, this would be reduction because that was a decrease in oxidation number. But it also went from negative 1 to 0. And that's an increase in oxidation number. That's ox oxidation. So in this case, the oxygen is both oxidized and reduced. It's one element that's both oxidized and reduced. And that's more of a rare example, but I just wanted to show you that because then that's something you could be thrown at uh, on the test. And that's how you have it. That's how you would determine which element is oxidized and reduced. Start by just assigning the oxidation number and then just look for the element that, so the element that has an increase in oxidation number is the element that gets oxidized and an element that has a decrease in oxidation number from going from the right hand, the left hand side to the right hand side is the one that is reduced. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.